Okay, we're going to talk about gongs briefly. Uh, gongs can be confused with tam-tams. Tam-tams can be confused with gongs, but usually we kind of refer to gongs as all being kind of the same thing. So, but technically a gong is a specific pitched large cymbal type instrument, whereas a tam-tam is a non-specific pitched instrument. Uh, this here is what we might call a wind gong. They're usually really thin. They don't have much of a ledge on the edge of them. Uh, some of them can have a lip or a ledge, um, and it can still be a gong. It can still be a tam-tam. It's just a different sound and pitched or non-pitched. This one is a 22-inch gong. Uh, as far as gongs are concerned, I guess you could say this is probably about average, but usually in a concert band setting, you would be playing gongs much bigger than this, maybe 40 inches or more. Um, so this is a relatively small one. Now, a uh, gong, anytime you hit it, actually takes a little while before the sound becomes its fullest. There's a slight delay. So what you may want to do when you play the gong, if you want the impact of the sound to happen at a specific time, is you could warm up the gong a little bit. We call this warming it up, where you do this. And the idea isn't to make a sound. The idea is just to get the instrument vibrating a little bit so that when you hit it, it has a full sound immediately. Now I really wish I had a nicer gong today for this video, but I don't. I like Wuhan gongs, but this particular one isn't awesome. And generally you want to play a gong off the center. If you play it right in the middle, you're not usually going to get the most pleasant sound, even though that's how you see it in the movies. And if you go to a Japanese steak or a house, they'll hit it right in the middle. And that's cool if you want that sound, but usually you want more of a, a sustaining tone when you hit a gong, a big, glorious, sustaining tone. And that's why this gong isn't particularly great for this uh, video, but just trying to talk to you through some of the basics of it. And the kind of mallet you want to use is going to be similar to like a bass drum mallet, but you do want it to be a little bit harder so that you can get this whole sheet of metal to resonate well. Anything too light isn't going to make a whole lot of noise when you, when you hit it. You're not going to get the, the weight of the mallet isn't going to be enough to get the whole instrument to vibrate.